What is going on guys? The Electric Infamous here and uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit of the pure finesse, you know, basically the pure rogue of this game of Kingdoms of Amor. Re-reckoning here through the backwards compatibility on PS5. But um I I've done I've done a build on basically, you know, the Shadowcaster build and I don't think I never really talked anything about, you know, like the pure roguish elements of this game. Uh, in terms of its gameplay structure and how it's a different type of playstyle from that of like any other playstyles in the game. I mean, every different kind of playstyle in this game is always going to be different in terms of its skills and its and its abilities. More appropriate on more of its abilities than its skills because the skills are always going to be the be the norm or be they're always going to be the same. Basically, that's what I'm trying to say. But anyways, too much further ado, I hope you enjoy this video. Um, so what I'm going to be showing you, especially within the finesse, um, I basically went through with everything, you know, from, you know, to the, from the assassin's art all the way up to, you know, the precise weaponry. Um, I am basically just uh, using both fade blades and daggers. Uh, usually when I go with the, da if I'm going to go with daggers, mostly if I want to go into stealth, mode and you know just like uh, doing those really cool sneak attack camera system from like that uh feels like the same like from what skyrim does in terms of that you know it's really cool it, it's a really good concept and i really like the way how they implemented that in this game it's just one of the best things of that being a pure rogue in this game kingdoms of Amalur. so it's pretty awesome and boss at the same time um what really makes this game even more efficient playing as the pure rogue, all of the finesse tree, um, you have some really cool abilities, especially because, I mean, you have, for for example, for a couple of examples, for one, you have the smoke bomb, okay? Um, that really hinders your character uh, vulnerable, but you will be invisible or undetectable. Which is cool. That's awesome. Um, another thing that really makes this game even more unique, though, too, because I previously mentioned in my previous video that I just pre recently made, regarding the difference between a, playing as a shadow caster versus the finesse pure rogue playstyle, uh, is the frost trap. Uh, the frost traps really do a really good job in terms of proper planning. If you have proper planning and be able to know what you're going to be doing for this your rogue playstyle. You put these down, and then when you have like, let's say you have more than four or five enemies at a time, and you can't take them out, especially if you're using daggers rather than using fan blades, you have your traps at your disposal. And like I said, as I showed you here, it's like, you know, putting three uh, frost traps down, and then now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to charge up my gambit, which is another really cool ability called yeah like i said it's called gambit excuse me it does it makes your character do an acrobatic leap to where you can do where the uh, they're like mines basically they're like it's really yeah some traps or mines are dispersed across the field in a five meter radius each trap deals 150 damage cost 80 80 mana so that's really cool especially when you're doing this type of playstyle. it's pretty awesome that's why I like about this about this place out as well. Um, another thing that's really cool is the Envenomed Edge, especially since you're going with the pure rogue, you want to be able to do the poison. I mean, the poisons is the best thing that you probably want to use, especially doing this type of thing. Uh, another thing that's really cool is the blade honing. Uh, the blade honing basically is like a... It gives you the active ability of razor sharp blades of your weapons cut into your foes with ease you know whether if you're using it does critical hits damage for long swords daggers fade blades and great swords is substantially increased which means that you're going to be doing more critical hit damage with your weapons that's awesome i think that's really cool as well Another thing that I really enjoyed as well is the Shadow Flare. Shadow Flare is basically a... They're like... Uh, it, they're like Shadow Daggers, basically. You're, going, you're throwing them up against higher enemies 
per se, and you're going to be able to do more piercing damage and, and poison damage against your foes, that's what makes that more efficient as well. Now we're going to go back up into the into the uh, the poison tree here because another thing I forgot to mention is the fact that when you go with the inoculation, that's going to help your poison resistance. I highly recommend investing into this because it's going to be that much more viable for you, especially if you're going to be doing a pure rogue. That's all I can say to you. Um, mysterious toxins. <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, that'll basically have, you know... The uh, the poison basically from your know, venom's edge is going to propagate amongst other types of enemies within a, in a within probably I don't know how much per radius I really can't say but it says seventy percent chance to trigger a poison cloud when a poison enemy dies poison cloud deals three hundred poison damage that is just ridiculous and what's really cool is the paralytic poisons the paralytic poisons are going to give you a long hidden secrets of poison craft enabling your poison attacks to temporarily stun your opponents that's really cool especially when you're going to go really higher up into the enemy level or enemy territory within kingdom within kingdoms of amalur that's another really cool thing about that as well um another thing i could mention as well is the fact that you know with the rogue build, you gotta go with long. You gotta go with the long bow. I mean, the long bow is definitely one of the greatest things about being this type of playstyle, because as you, as you can see here, if you press down on the L2 or the same, I think the same trigger. If you're playing on Xbox, that's what will happen. Is and then it'll just bring down arrows and uh, upon your enemies within like. How much of a radius but it does a surmountable damage but it also depends on how much damage that your bow will, will be able to do and on top of that it has to do with what you have on your gear in terms of the critical hit damage or with physical hit or chance of critical hit so that's the biggest thing that you want to be able to have especially if you're going with the pure rogue playstyle. uh let's see one more thing i will mention oh yeah and then the poison bomb i but uh, you know, the poison bomb is basically that of the upgraded version of the smoke bomb itself. It'll basically propagate poison, as it says over here on Mysterious Toxins. That poison is be is going to be able to propagate towards, like, maybe more than one enemy in the game, If you're, especially if you're going to be doing stealth. That's another cool thing or aspect of this game as well, especially playing this type of playstyle. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, another thing I will mention here real quick is the lunch. Uh, I guess I will mention that real quick here. And I got another one here. Uh, let's see. The lunch is really going to be really cool, especially if you're going to be like a little bit uh, overwhelmed with enemies around you. Now, what's really cool about this is that what it does. Uh, let's go to here. That's what it does, and then when you do that against your against an enemy, and then do it again this way, it'll basically knock your enemy back just a little bit and give it, and it'll get a chance to stun your enemies. Hence, you'll be able to go in with it within the fray of trying to get them with your either with your daggers or with your fade blades. That's cool. I think that's a really cool uh, ability. And last but not least, um, I'm going to talk about the assassin's art. Now, the Assassin's Art is definitely one of the biggest highlights, especially when you're going with a pure rogue, which falls under the finestry. Each time that you do a surmountable of, uh, critical hit with, it, within stealth mode, it's all just nothing but one single stealth hit, and then boom, they're, done, they're, they're dead. I mean, it's ridiculous of how much you can do. Like I previously mentioned, with your with your daggers or your fave blades or your bow if you have proper planning and be able to know what, how to strike your enemies in the shadows i'm telling you uh the, the critical hit damage the 70 percent critical hit damage ha it also has to do with what your gear is going to be pertaining in terms of that type of skill or ability which is a buff basically when you have 70 percent critical critical damage that has to do with what your gear is going to be using in terms of that critical hit damage or, or critical hit chance. And on top of that, it has to do with the physical hit as well.
physical damage, excuse me. So that makes more sense to me. But anyways, this is the Electric Infamous here. I thought I'd make this quick video on this pure rogue build here. Um, I'm playing as a Dalkofar. They are no, commonly known as the Dark Elf. And the reason why I went with the Dark Elf, one, this is the last thing I'm going to mention, is because the Dark Elf actually um, is more honed into the stealth thing rather than the Varani. The Varani, for what I understand, is probably going to be the best build to use if you're going to pure rogue. But, I mean, i played this game for so much. You know, I don't know. I can't recall how long I've played it. But the reason why I went with the Dolkofar or the Dark Elf is because they are much more efficient into the stealth rather than the Verani. Because you're able to level up your stealth just a little bit quicker if you go with the Dark Elf rather than with the Verani. But that's just my own opinion or my own, or my own take. But anyways... Thank you for tuning in, guys. We really appreciate it. If you have any kind of comments or questions you might have, or please leave a like on, on my channel as well. This is the Electric Infamous, and peace.